it's a museum now, but this imposing Victorian building was once the most notorious in the country. It was known as Scotland's Alcatraz. We're actually in Peterhead Prison. It opened in 1888, and it's the only convict prison in the whole of Scotland. The inmate sent here was sentenced to penal servitude. Penal servitude, that's when you're sentenced to hard labour, and they're sent to break stones up in the quarry two and a half miles south from here. In the 1880s, the dark sea off the Aberdeenshire coast was stormy and treacherous. Many vessels sank, countless fishermen drowned. A safe harbour was needed. To build this would take a lot of labour, and the cheaper, the better. Convicted criminals had long been sent to England to complete their sentences, so Scotland also needed its own prison. So the government decided to use one hammer to break two boulders. They would build a jail to house all Scotland's convicted criminals and use them to build a harbour of refuge. Huge jetties of rocks stretching out into the grey, swirling water of Peterhead Bay to provide shelter for ships caught in deadly North Sea storms. The railroad that ran between here and the quarry, two and a half miles south, it was the first state-owned railroad in Britain. That was created to carry the convicts back and forth to the quarry. From the day it was opened in 1896, no one wanted to end up in Peterhead Prison. But by 1911, over 250 convicts were held here, breaking stones for the breakwater by day and freezing in their cells by night. These tiny cells caged some of Scotland's most violent men, many of whom had no hope of ever being released. And it was always claimed that escape was impossible. I think it was very much a place where, in a sense, prisoners were banished to. And some of the cells were very small, and they had sort of hammocks in the old days. It was only designed to hold 208 convicts, but it was very often overcrowded. At one point, 455 criminals were crammed within these walls. As time evolved, we're look, really looking at housing uh, Scotland's worst, out of the worst in here. It was an all-male prison. It was an A-category high-risk prison. And prisoners here potentially would have been committing uh, multiple murders, uh, serious offences or even causing a lot of problems in other prisons. And that's the reason they were sent here to be housed for the period of their time. I think for prisoners, having been sent to Peterhead was considered that they'd reached the sort of top of the pack. The place was tense, the staff, I think, were under stress with a lot of uh, violent uh, prisoners there. And they were difficult and dangerous and disruptive. So, yeah, it was very challenging. They did not have an easy life. Hard labour continued until 1957, when inmates were given less arduous tasks, like making nets for North Sea fishermen. The prison was cold and damp, with freezing winds howling off the North Sea. Many of the inmates had lived far away from the North East, the majority coming from the Central Belt, so family visits were rare. Very soon, discontent festered until the prison became known as the Hate Factory. I think that was a phrase that was used by prisoners, and that certainly seemed to be a legacy that they believed in, that they felt they were victimised, that they felt their rights were taken away from them when they were imprisoned in Peterhead and if they misbehaved, and a lot of them did misbehave because they were the sort of prisoners who were sent to Peterhead because they'd already misbehaved in other uh, prisons, if they were punished then they felt that this wasn't right and so it built up this sort of we and them culture. 
inmates held here uh, tended to come from right across Scotland, a vast majority from down south. So you're looking at Glasgow, Edinburgh, Dundee, South areas that were sent up here. Of course, it's well documented in the newspapers that it was too far for visits, they claimed. The part that isn't often explained, of course, is that if inmates behave themselves, they could actually build up points and they could be taken down south to meet their families down there. But it was always the one side of kind of story here that was too far for people to come up here. In 1986, a riot was started when prisoners set fire to A-Wing. A quarter of a million pounds worth of damage was done and should have served as a warning of more unrest to come. I was a discipline officer for 25 years in Peterhead Prison. Well, with your habituals, it was quite good, like, but your troublemakers, well, it wasn't so good, like. But even them, you know, you could get along with them for spells, but then they just had a, decided to have a ride, and that was it. It was over nothing, actually. The prisoner had done something wrong in the morning. I'm just a minor thing, and he'd been placed in a governor's report by an officer. In the evening, he decided to stab him. I went to his aid, got the knife off him, but then the whole hall had joined in, so it handed back, like, and then I was taken hostage, along with the, the other officer, like. It all came to a head when 50 prisoners in D Hall seized prison officer Jackie Stewart, dragged him precariously across the steep sloping roof of the prison and threatened to execute him. Never realised really what was happening until they started carrying me upstairs and they took it to us up the top flat there. Then put us in the cell and they let us out on the floor and beat us with table legs, both of us. The other officer so badly beaten, he was out on day one. Um, the inmates were concerned about his, his well-being. So he was uh, released. And then they broke through into the attic space at the top flat and we turned the roof the next day. At the time it was a wooden roof full of slates. So they managed to get into the roof space, break through onto the roof, and then he was held there for four days. Uh, during that time they put lighter fluid in his pocket, threatened to set him on fire. He was beaten probably every day he was up there stabbed three times in the incident as well. Oh, it was pretty rough, like, and he was getting beaten all the time, you know, everybody was on a, a go at you. Well, the first night it was qu quite cold out there, like, and I was sharing a blanket with the guy who started it, actually, like. He was being paraded on the roof and that was uh, not only degrading uh, but dangerous and everybody was very concerned so it was a it was a difficult time the officer then slumped down on the roof again resting his head on the wall visibly distressed and exhausted this afternoon mr stewart has not made another rooftop appearance but officials say they have been assured he's still in reasonable health the sort of last two days would be like a stalemate Nobody could come in and nobody could get out. Like. The prisons were well organised and had a hostage who we couldn't get to, to rescue. We needed more resource than we had to get Jackie Stewart out. And uh, as history tells you, uh, we, we handed over our command uh, from prison service to the police and the police handed their command to the military. After five days of destruction, Home Secretary Douglas Hurd ordered in the SAS. They began their operation at 5 a.m. and in just six minutes, they had regained control of the prison and rescued Officer Stewart. They put in stun grenades and gas, and I just finished it like. Then they made me run from there to that end along a ledge climb up a rope and down a ladder and get away. The SAS came on site. It's the first time and only time they've been used to end a domestic siege in UK mainland. Tense, very really anxious, and of course at the end extremely relieved. Yeah, it should do. That's how nasty people would have put up with, like, and there's a lot of bad people.
Gradually, the prison became used exclusively for sex offenders until 2011. It finally closed in 2013 to make way for a new super prison nearby. Today, the former jail attracts tourists who are advised to wrap up warmly as they wander around the chilly cells. One TV channel has even recorded a ghost hunt here. The case for ghosts is not proven, but the spirit of this old jail still stands as a grim reminder of Scotland's recent history.